I can. It's okay. chocolat. And uh, doesn't mean chocolate, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a word a word from a, a people from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. There are about 250 different ethnic groups mm -hmm. within that country, and uh, this is a language of uh, the drummer who is on the album and who who wrote that piece. Mm -hmm. and he gave it uh, the title, and I thought it was a great title, so I also used it for the album. It means, in fact, healing. It's the, the act of a, of a healer mm -hmm. uh, curing uh, physical or mental ills in, 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 the, in, the, in the village. Sure. So what, what, was, what, what made you want to record this music, this particular kind of music? I know it's a, a heavy Afro-pop movement in France, yes. in Paris specifically. Right. Well, I don't live in Paris anymore. I've been uh, living in California for 18 years yes. now. And uh, I have been disconnected with the musical scene in France. The only time I was going there was on vacation, mm -hmm. and not necessarily in Paris, or passing through cities on tour, and that totally. meant very fast. But three years ago, I was on tour with my group, and in Paris, a young lady journalist uh, made me aware for the first time that um, around the mid-'80s, quite a, a, a good number of uh, African groups and musicians from West African countries, from French-speaking African countries, had moved to Paris, and that the musical scene had tremendously changed thanks mm -hmm. to them, and that she said some of these groups were really good, and uh, I immediately I was very curious about it. Mm -hmm. She added that she had interviewed a few of these musicians and that they had mentioned my name among some Western musicians that they were mm -hmm. listening to. So I got even more intrigued, sure, sure. and uh, I wrote some names down and went on uh, with my business of touring and recording for another year, forgot about it. A year later, I was back in Paris on vacation. This time I remember the conversation, bought some albums, mm -hmm. uh, loved the music. Uh, of course, the rhythm feel I expected to be great, mm -hmm. because as, as a Westerner, we think of African music first as rhythm. great rhythms. Yeah. But the big surprise for me was to hear uh, the, the, the melodic richness from, uh, especially from some countries like Mali and Guinea, mm, sure. that produce great singers like Salif Keita, Mori Kante, and, and, and some more. So uh, very quickly I got the urge of uh, jamming with these records. Mm.
African musicians because um, you know African music has influenced jazz, has influenced uh, Latin music, but it has come back to them. Sure. So, you know they they have records also, they have radio stations, sure. and uh, they know all the greatest uh, jazz names or rhythm and blues and. And therefore, and they also had to play um, uh, for, for uh, at the time of colonization, they had to play dance music for the Westerners, and that was mostly Latin music, mm. like rumba, cha cha, and so, and so forth, and Cuban music. And therefore, something. There's a heavy influence on Yeah. It. yeah. Uh, that's when they started using modern Western instruments, electric guitars as mm. well, and drums. And uh, although uh, after uh, when they got the in, uh, their independence, they came back to, to their roots musically, but they kept the modern instruments sure. and adapted, for instance, the guitar uh, tries to get that balafon sound mm -hmm. and uh, plays the role of a balafon, for instance.
the richness of this music. Can you elaborate on that for? for me? Yes, uh, there is the, the the some profound melodies which which surprised me because I didn't expect uh, that in African music, but also. The, some rhythms were incredibly uh, complex and uh, difficult to play for me for the first time um, to feel especially but the beauty of it is that although there are a lot of polyrhythms which make for, for a complex rhythm to analyze for a musician yet for a non-musician they feel a groove going on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's very happy and very grooving and i think the reason is because this was not uh created uh, it, it was not that an intellectual mm -hmm. uh creation by musicians it, it comes directly from uh, from dance sure. and uh, i guess everybody in the village who can play or dance just moves naturally it's, it feels very natural mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it yeah, the melodies are probably some of the things that they've heard, you know, that growing up as a child. Or it comes from traditionals, and when mm. when you mean a traditional in, yeah. in Africa, that goes uh, quite quite a few time, centuries. Sure. Yes, and so they do each one, each uh, even singer or musician does a modern version, modern mm -hmm. arrangement on it, with modern influences. I guess they get, but uh, yet the essence, Still the, the phrasing, yeah. And what I love is the the blend of energy and lyricism at, at the same time. Wow, it's beautiful. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, you coming to the States, you know, um, after you heard jazz in Paris and jammed with some of the masters, you know, what made you realize that New York is the place you should be? Well, um, I didn't realize New York was the place because I moved to Los Angeles. Oh, I'm like sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for me, it was not just one city in particular. Mm -hmm. It was coming to the U.S. because um, at that time, and I'm talking nine, the early 70s, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of experimentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's where it was happening. It was in the U.S. Uh, young musicians uh, or not so young I mean at least musicians of my generation uh, were definitely uh, looking at uh, doing something new by opening the doors to different influences mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very very exciting time and uh, I guess when you're a musician uh, the thing to do is go where it's happening mm -hmm. Uh, if it's New York, go to New York like uh, many musicians did. Um, or if it's painting, you know, uh, at the beginning of the century, all the painters in Europe were going to Paris, Paris. because that's where it was happening. So it was, it was uh, my reason, it was musical reasons. And also, uh, I had met quite a, a few American musicians coming through Europe. Mm -hmm. and they, Several of them had invited me and incited me to, to come here. And mm -hmm. I found a very uh, creative and very stimulating environment. Mm -hmm. What were some of the first groups you played with in the States? Well, uh, Mothers of Invention, the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And through there, some of those guys became your band members. Yeah. Members of your band. Right. Yeah. Uh, not, well, just uh, one in particular. Yeah. yeah. Ralph Armstrong, who yes. was the bass player with Mahavishnu. Yes, a great bass player from Detroit. And Sonny was your teacher. My teacher, also. about your new project. Repeat it once more for our viewers so they'll know which album to pick up. 
We are talking about chocolate. Thank you for joining us on Jazz Backstage. Be sure to tune in again next week for another exciting show. Jazz Backstage is brought to you in part by Ford.